Hello, Priscilla White, vicar of St Faith and St Lawrence Church in Harborn, with worship for the Sunday after Ascension Day, focusing on the Ascension particularly. If you're seeing this via our website or via Facebook, there should be a downloadable version of the order of service available there, so please feel free to use that. Let's take a moment of quiet as we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So for some responses as we begin. We know you, and we do not know you. You are mysterious and full of joy. You know us and you understand us. You are loving and full of truth. You welcome us and you live in us. You are holy and full of hope. We look for you in each other. We look for you in our midst. And so we come to our first hymn, again sung by the choral scholars of St Martin's in the Fields, the head that once was crowned with thorns. image or those images of Christ in our hearts and our minds, our opening prayer. Lord, direct our thoughts, teach us to pray, lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our confession. Seeing we have a great high priest who has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, and make our confession to our Heavenly Father. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, 
and confess to you our weakness and our unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, save us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive us our sins, open our eyes to God's truth, strengthen us to do God's will, and give us the joy of his kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for today. Risen Christ, you have raised our human nature to the throne of heaven. Help us to seek and serve you that we may join you at the Father's side, where you reign with the Spirit in glory, now and forever. Amen. So at this point, I invite you to take a moment to read the reading for yourselves, to take as long as you need over it, whether you want to spend time reflecting on it before you come to my reflection, and when you've read and reflected as much as you would like, rejoin for the reflection. After the reflection, we will hear an anthem sung by the choral scholars of St. Martin's in the fields. The prayer of St. Richard. Thanks be to thee, Lord Jesus Christ. So to a reflection. It's a long time since I walked to the top of a mountain. There's something special about mountain tops or even hilltops. The chance to fill one's lungs with clean air, the view that can be seen from the top when the air is clear, the sense of being above the concerns and the preoccupations of the valley or the level ground. Mountains are very important in Matthew's Gospel. There are seven mountains which punctuate the narrative and which are where the significant things happen. Matthew follows the Hebrew scriptures in suggesting that encounters with God will be particularly significant on mountains. Think Noah, think Moses, think Elijah, think the concept of the mountain of God in which the Messianic banquet will take place. Mountains offer a perspective, a different view. They enable us to transcend our pressing issues and troubles, seeing them from above not from the place where we're overwhelmed by them. So it's hardly surprising that Matthew's gospel narrative draws to a close on a mountain. Here, Jesus gathers the eleven. Here he gives them their commission. Here he offers a way forward. And here, in this short story, we have three pairs of contrasting images. Worship and doubt. Authority and responsibility and presence and absence. We read that on the mountain they worshipped him, but some doubted. Even in the presence of Jesus, even knowing all that they knew and having experienced all that they had experienced, some doubted. But look and listen carefully. They worshipped. Some doubted. The implication is that even in the midst of their doubt, worship happens. Even in fear, even as they wondered what might happen next, even as they were perplexed, they found space to worship. We may often find ourselves embattled, fearful, wondering just how God can possibly be present for us in a situation. Whether it's lockdown, the implications of moving out of it, illness, insecurity, whatever. We can wonder where God is and what God is doing. The disciples worshipped through and in doubt. Those who doubted joined in worship 
and perhaps allowed the worship of others to carry what they may have felt was their feebler offering. As we gather and worship together, some may feel less like worshipping than others, but it's still worth it. It's still what we are called to do, called to be. Even in worship, there's room for doubt, room for the doubter. So we hear Jesus giving the 11 instruction. He says, all authority in heaven on, and on earth has been given to me. The 11 are to go. They are to tell the story of Jesus to people everywhere without distinction. They're to begin to create the network, which will be the people of God, the Christian church. The authority is that of Jesus, but the responsibility is theirs. They could have gone down the mountain and done nothing. We know that that's not what they did or didn't, because here we are in 2020, sharing together the story of Jesus, worshipping together and learning to live the lives of disciples. This short passage is known as the Great Commission. It's a commission given not only to the eleven and to the rest of Jesus' followers at the time, but through them to us. We are to tell the story. We are to encourage the shoots of faith in others. We are to help people to grow closer to Jesus. The authority belongs to Jesus, but the responsibility is ours. It's Jesus who sends, and for us to go, as did the first disciples. So thirdly, we see the disciples learning to grapple with the truth that although Jesus' physical presence is leaving them, he is not abandoning them. Lo, I am with you always to the end of the age. Despite his apparent physical absence, he will be with them. We know that the next phase of the story is the coming of the Spirit, and that's the Spirit who accompanies us in our faith journey as we seek to be disciples of Jesus. As yet they did not know, but had to trust in the promise of presence. We may be reminded of the poem Footprints, which expresses something of the presence of God when we can't feel or engage with it. The promise is that we are not abandoned. The call is to live in such a way that our fear is transcended by our faith. In a few moments, we'll hear an anthem setting the prayer of St Richard to music. The words remind us of our call to discipleship, and the image of following reminds us of Jesus' presence for us continually. If we feel that we're in a valley, or shut in by this whole process of lockdown, we can pray that Jesus might raise us up and enable us to find the mountaintop on which we can breathe clear air and see the landscape from a new and a different perspective. That's ascension. That's the promise that Jesus gives us. Amen.
and so we affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every other name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So again, an opportunity to pause the video, either to use the pattern of prayer that you find in the order of service, or to spend your own time in prayer. When you're done, on pause, join us again for the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our next hymn comes from St Martin in the Fields again and is Crown Him with Many Crowns. with you. My peace I give to you. If you love me, rejoice, because I am going to the Father. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Let's remember as we are perhaps on our own or just our household, 
that we still are connected in peace with the wider congregation and wider church. We go in hope to live the good news. We go in wonder to live the good news. We go in joy to live the good news. We go in the name of Jesus, in the Spirit's wisdom, and in the friendship of God. Amen. Christ, our ascended King, pour upon you the abundance of his gifts and bring you to reign with him in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen.